Welcome to another video here on P2P Empire on tour. I'm still in Riga, Latvia, and today I will be meeting up with a smaller, less known crowdfunding platform called Land Secured. They offer investments into agricultural loans, which is quite unique in the P2P lending scene. So I'm curious to learn more about their risk management procedures. Also, I will be talking with the CEO to learn more about his background. And I also have a few critical questions to ask. So I'm curious to hear his answers today. All right, so just a quick disclaimer here, this video is not sponsored. P2P Empire is covering all the costs connected with this trip. If you'd like to support our project, you can do so at buymeacoffee.com slash P2P Empire. Also, there is going to be some exclusive footage, which will be available only to our members. So if you want to become a member, you can do so as well at buymeacoffee.com slash P2P Empire. All right, so we are running late. Let's grab a cap so we can get there. All right, so now we are here at Land Secure's headquarters in Riga. It's about 20 minutes ride from the city center. It's the same address as you can see on the website, which is a good sign. Now let's go in and try to find a CEO. So I'm here with Nikita Gonchars, the CEO of Land Secure, and he's going to give us a tour of the office. Hi, Jakob. Hello, investors. Just let's take a look. So we are first greeted by our secretary and Let's continue. Here is the main office where is all the team based. We are having this open office structure and uh, let's introduce you with the team. Here is the sales team based and you can see the KPIs on the screen and uh, now they are having a lunch break. So here is a, we call it brainstorming corner. You can see some drafts of the upcoming statistics page for the new rebranding page Landa. Over there, it's a quiet place where the IT and uh, accountancy is based. So sometimes they need to quiet moments, sales teams can get very loud at moments. And uh, I'm sitting here with the team just over there. And uh, here is based the uh, legal team, the risks and debt collection. Also Arthur's uh, support and investments uh, manager. And we also have some uh, standing tables just in case you just want to change the position. So actually that's it. And uh, all investors are welcome to come to visit us at any time. The CEO of Land Secured, which was recently rebranded to Lande, has been operating a lending company in Latvia that's focusing on mortgage-backed loans for more than 10 years now. Hence, I asked him about his motivation for creating a platform that will focus on funding secured agricultural loans. 2016-15 started to issue like some minor loans to farmers also. So this was not focused at all. So it was just, you know, you put the marketing, part of the traffic was agricultural loans. And we were like, oh, it's quite nice niche, let's try it. And we started to obtaining some small portfolio. We saw the performance, we saw the price of the land. We had some debt collection cases, they were quite easy because land is uh, super liquid you know, in, in Baltics for sure. And the prices grew like twice for the last five years. So yeah, mm -hmm. the market is nice. And yeah, and this actually was partly, you know, the story how Land Secure occurred. We also had this idea to launch our platform because market here is quite small. It's hard to obtain funding just from banks. You need to like wait for half a year to just prolong the credit line. It's crazy. We had a licensed lending business and uh, this peer-to-peer -peer lending, crowd lending was not regulated. And we were like, there were talks like the Latvian law will be adopted. It was even introduced a draft. So we were, oh, let's wait, let's wait. So we were waiting, 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 but nothing happened actually. So we lost time, platform developed, and uh, then some of them crashed yeah, because of the lack of regulation. So mm -hmm. basically, we entered much later than we would wish, but in, you know, otherwise, it's totally different industry now. It's much more you know, mature, much more important in terms of how bloggers are doing their job mm -hmm. and all the due diligence. So yeah, maybe we missed you know, the big wave, but now it's like a more mature business. And, mm -hmm. At last, last year, the regulation was adopted in November. So after, I think, four or five years waiting. And uh, yeah, we already issued all the documents to FCMC to receive the license. So when researching the previous company of the founder of Landa, you might have noticed some controversial information about the company's practices. So I asked Nikita to explain this case. So obviously, when investors decide to, to join a platform, they will do like a background check of, yeah, of, sure, of, sure. of the CEO and the company, right? Mm -hmm. And it's no secret that there has been some controversial information on, yeah, the, sure. on the internet is... about your previous business where like the, the main takeaway from, from like some articles was that you have, you know, had unfair practices when it came to debt recovery. Yeah, yeah. 
So can you perhaps share more about that? Sure, sure. This is you know, a common question for me. And it's not you know, just directly bad or good. It was a hard experience for us, but this happens. We entered the like, very important and uh, quite profitable business. At, uh, I was 23 years at the time. My partner was 27. So there were already players for, for working for the 10 years. And we started competing with them with uh, you know, introducing new practices and uh, like growing quite successfully. And, and this is a very small market. Latvia is like biggest. 600,000 people and we have like three, four, five mortgage lending businesses. So we know all the players here. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very small community. And so they saw we we're growing and we we're young and ambitious. So other players are 40 plus people started in the 90s, mm -hmm. obtaining capital from some, you know, mm -hmm. selling uh, vodka, you know, and uh, wine and, mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. So it's uh, not so always, you know, a, a very easy business. And we were like quite naive. I just graduated from the high school. We thought, yeah, let's let's help people, let's refinance the loans, let's do it. Yeah, and let's. We didn't think about competition, about that there are some you know rules. The market is separated between the players. We just start taking all the clients we could. You know, ambitious, young, and uh, like why not? We're doing something good. So yeah, so they started to see this and they started to um, marketing channels also also crossing. For example, if the client is filling an application, we receive it. If its competitor receives it, some existing clients want to refinance. So this is also you know like one bowl of soup. Mm -hmm. And when they see our clients, they started just to you know blackmail us, just to this unfair competition, and they started to provide better services to them. They said, okay, I'll go to the regulator, write a letter, sign a letter, we'll give you lower interest. All this kind of crap and bullshit. And they hired lawyers to just to make her business hard. They, they paid some journalists to, to blackmail us. So it was, uh, at first we were like, okay, we're not doing anything wrong. All our services are like uh, approved by the regulator. We have written approval of all our services. It's not like we decided to do it. We're just always doing everything approved, like with the platform also. And uh, at some point, the volume of this blackmail became too big and it just uh, appeared an interesting story for journalists and they decided to write about it, that's all. So this is a, a very hard practice for us, you know, it's... That case ever went to like the legal system or the court? It went to the legal system and we just, our lawyers are working on this, there's no final decision yet. And oh really? Just, there's, there's not? No, no. There is, there is first, first instance, you know, but in Latvia it doesn't mean anything. You need to go through all the process like mm -hmm. first, second and the higher court. And so you need to wait for higher court decision. And that's it. I also had a very insightful discussion with the risk manager. I asked him how Lande can check whether the pledge offered for the agricultural loan is real. Although in Latvia, for example, and in, in other member states, uh, there is a registry for each land plot. Mm -hmm. So when we check the public information, we see that the, the grain is already sold there. We know it's there. We also uh, do insurance on it. The insurer goes there and sees that it's there. And then also we sign an agreement between uh, our borrower, us, and the purchaser who buys the grain. So he also checks the information. So we have uh, like uh, three collaterals, like three way uh, of checking that the collateral exists, so that mm -hmm. it's real, and that it's, it will be in case of the in, in case of uh, default. Default, yeah, we will get this money. And, uh, the risk of your investments in agricultural loans comes down to the quality of the pledge. So I also ask about how Lande measures the loan to value ratio. So based on the size of the plot and the type of grain, the type of harvest, you're able to calculate how much tons of harvest yeah. that farmer is going to produce. And you kind of double check with the purchaser on that quantity. And then you look at the current price for that type of grain in order to estimate the, the collateral value. There's more than one way. The purchaser can, and the seller and the buyer can set a price at the time of the contract mm -hmm. agreement mm -hmm. when we issue the loan. If they fix the price, then we look at the price and then we evaluate the LTV. Another uh, way is to look at the stock of the grain and the prediction, how it will be of the harvest time. For example, now it's going to be for the winter, they will harvest in May. Mm -hmm. in June and we look at that price and so we evaluate the risk. So there's two ways, yeah. And the third way is in between. I mean, they can uh, agree that the price is set when by different, uh, or the borrower can ask the price, uh, can fix the price at any time during the loan. 
Mm-hmm. That's the third way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so for example, I, I see that today the, on the stock exchange, there's the price is 200 a ton. Mm-hmm. I want to fix it. I, I don't believe that in the harvest time it will be as, as high. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. I want to fix it now, and that's also the possibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But what happens if the harvest gets destroyed? What if there is a bigger deviation from the expected amount of grain that is going to be produced on that mm-hmm. land plot? Like if it's less, for instance, you mm-hmm. said something about insurance. Can you explain how that works? If the grain is not as much as expected, uh, there is a reason for that. The reason may be uh, bad weather or, or some other reason or, or some damage done by third third party, for mm-hmm. example, as well. And that also is insured. Recently, we our, one of our clients was uh, sold uh, a wrap seeds mm-hmm. and it froze. Just and the insurer paid out amount for him to re- redone the, the process again. Mm-hmm. So he did it and, and we are expecting a harvest in, in September. So you still have to expect that the amount is still there? It's the same, same. Okay, yeah, so the same. insurer is, is covering like everything? It's covering everything, yeah. It's not actually everything, I think it's 90 or 80 percent. It seems like Landa has systems in place to mitigate several risk factors. Now, since I know that the platform will be expanding, I wondered how they would deal with the risk management in other markets. I understand that you have experience in Latvia and probably you know all the stakeholders here, it's, it's a small country. Mm-hmm. When you decide to expand in different countries, you will probably try to replicate something similar that works here. But do you see some challenges happening in different countries? Of course, I mean, first of all, uh, if you look at the agricultural sector in Latvia and agriculture in, for example, Greece, it's not the same product, it's not the same pledge, it mm-hmm. will be something different. And we have to adjust, uh, so in that case, these uh, agri-tech companies comes in place uh, where they help us to do that. They help us monitor the field, they help us uh, understand the, the market. And of course, we have to do our own research and we, we will. But th- I mean, that's the challenge, I guess. Finding out, uh, for example, for uh, wrap seeds, uh, there is a stock exchange where we, we see the price going, mm-hmm. going up and go down. We have to find out the way to see the prices and evaluate and forecast them in, in the different countries where mm-hmm. there is not such, for example, apples or, 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 no. or whatever you grow. Mm-hmm. So far, Landa didn't have any liquidation of collateral, which makes many investors wonder whether they would be able to take over the pledge if the loan defaults. What's also worth mentioning is that land secured, from what I've heard, you did not have uh, any liquidation of collateral yet, right? Yes, and this is, you know, good and bad at the same time, so people yeah. are... But uh, let's not miss the bigger picture. We are here 10 years. We did all this for many times. So you can yeah. just, uh, if after this speech, we can... Janis can show, show you the debt monitoring system and how the process are working. We cannot share I think it's on video because it's personal data of borrowers. But uh, this is, you know, like work. Everything has their daily duties and our lawyer has daily duties to write the warning letters, write letters to court. And this system is working here perfectly and it works in Europe perfectly because banking, banks are financing. When banks is entering a new country in an emerging market, doesn't matter. The first they want to do, they create a legal structure. If the legal structure is not working, debt collection, you cannot give mortgages for 2% mm-hmm. because you cannot give your money back, yeah? mm-hmm. banks would not do it. And here we have Scandinavian banks, we have uh, like all kinds of banks and the system is working perfectly. So from a risk perspective, it sounds pretty interesting. Platform also offers relatively high yields between 10 and 12% per year. So I wondered why they offer such high returns on secured loans. I think like the main question people are asking, you know, even like across peer-to-peer lending industry, you can earn 11, 12% by investing in like emerging markets on secured loans mm. and you're offering the same yield for secured loans in the European Union. Yeah, but we are a new platform. It's totally different for us. We need to grow, we need to attract investors. You know, it's just, uh, we can call it marketing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's actually this, we pay more just to, to grow. Yes, we are not earning much ourselves, but it's not the point at this stage. Yeah. And when, you, when you're mature, like some top platforms, yeah, you can just lower the rates. What's, we see that they are doing this. Mm-hmm. And uh, in my point, if there is a new platform and it's reliable, it's interesting. Okay, it's always risky. It's any investment. You need to make the diligence, you need to see the track record. But if you see something like, you know, a growing company, it's like with stock market. Yeah, you mm-hmm. see a prospective company, it's it's potentially you can earn more. Mm-hmm. You can invest in a stable one, which was there for 100 years and you'll pay, earn less. Mm-hmm. So it's just uh, common sense. We're new and we need to, to be aggressive. And that's it. All right, so that was my visit of Land Secured. The team is very professional. They know what they are doing. At least that's my personal impression. They have answered all of the questions, which I'm very grateful for. Now let's talk about some of the 
strengths and weaknesses. The weakness is obviously the limited diversification which we have on the platform as of right now. Currently, you can only invest in agricultural loans from Latvia. However, they plan to expand as well. Obviously, the weaknesses are connected to the size of the platform and its relatively short track record. Now, let's talk about some of the positive features. I think that the risk and return ratio is exceptional on the land secured as you are basically investing in loans that are all backed by some kind of collateral, which is mainly grain, a heavy machine, or land. All of that collateral is quite liquid and the systems they have in place look quite legit. So from that standpoint, it's quite attractive as you can currently earn between 11 and 12% interest by investing in loans in Europe, which are over collateralized. So that's quite unique in my opinion. Also for the size of the platform, I think the features are quite good. They have a secondary market. They have the connection with Lemonway where you get a virtual IBAN account, which is also increasing the safety of your funds. So in that sense, I think it's a very interesting niche platform. If you would like to try it out, you can use the link in the description below and get yourself a cashback bonus. Also, if you would like to get updated about the latest developments of the platform navigate to p2pempire.com so those were my impressions from land secured if you like this type of content you would like to see more subscribe and hit the like button thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video